There are a few ways that geological structure and rock type influence coastal forms. Rock type matters because harder rocks such as granite will be eroded far more slowly to form distinct forms in the coast, whereas clay or mud are easily eroded and very quickly form landforms, which are then also quickly eroded. Whether a coastline is concordant or not also matters. Concordant coastlines occur when the rock type is parallel to the sea, with only that rock type being locally exposed. This causes less coastal erosion, as there are less weaknesses or faults in comparison to having a discordant coastline where multiple rock types are perpendicular to the sea. This causes the weaker material to erode, and then expose faults which intensify the erosion of the sides of the stronger material and the coast as a whole. This also links into the coast generally having faults in it too, since the more faults that a rock has, the more vulnerable it is to erosion at the coast, and as a result, the coast is influenced too. Headlands and bays are formed when a discordant coast has waves eroding it, since the weaker material like clay is naturally eroded, and this accelerates due to the increasing surface area for which water can erode. What remains is the harder material like rock, which is now in a peak shape. This headland naturally diffracts the waves, and so they become weaker and start to deposit material as constructive waves, keeping the newly eroded area as a bay. One characteristic to mention is how the headland is usually made of chalk or limestone, at least in the UK. A small case study to use is the Penn Anglers headlands and bays in Pembrokeshire. Cliffs and wave-cut platforms are formed as waves erode the foot of a cliff repeatedly due to its inherent weaknesses and from weathering which has made it weak. A cavity under the cliff forms which can be also called a wave-cut notch. This notch increases in size as the material is increasingly eroded due to the larger surface area exposed by the cavity and then the cliff material above it will be unable to be supported, resulting in the cliff collapsing. The residue material will eventually be transported elsewhere, leaving behind a relatively gentle platform of where the cliff used to be, a wave cut platform. This platform increases in size the more times this cycle repeats, as the waves will once again erode the new section of land. Caves are formed when waves go against a mass of material, most likely rock. At the coast, a cavity is formed. This is often accomplished through abrasion, as water carries material like sand and smaller rocks, which grind against it until potential weaknesses expand. These caves are not very big, but can be quite expansive depending on the strength of the rock. Arches are formed when the formation of a cave reaches the other side of a protrusion out from the coast. This causes there to be an arch-like structure connecting the two material masses together like a bridge. However, the waves will keep eroding the base mainly via hydraulic action and lower lying material will be eroded. As a result, the rock making up the arches will subsequently collapse. In the end, the arch will get smaller and smaller until it cannot be further supported and so it collapses as a whole. Stacks are the final part of this process after the arch has collapsed and all that is left is a stack, a vertical pole of material which is not connected to the main landmass. Eventually, it will be eroded too, as hydraulic action will cut away at the base and cause it to naturally collapse. The product of that is called a stump. An example to use for both arches and stacks is the old Harry Rocks in Dorset, southern England, which features these landforms. There are also other landforms which you need to know that are formed via deposition. Beaches are formed through the deposition of sand, shingle and pebbles from various wave processes acting on the beach. One characteristic of beaches is how they have distinct waves forming from the wind and even waves moving the beach sediment in particular ways. Sand dunes are largely formed from wind blowing sand and other material which accumulates into a dune. This is encouraged by dune fencing, which keeps the sand in, away from the waves. As well as this, vegetation like marron grass can spread across these coastal dunes and use their roots to hold the dune together and reduce its tendency to shift. A spit occurs from longshore drift when the movement reaches a sharp turn in the coast inwards, causing the material to extend in that particular direction, forming a spit, an extension of the coast away from mainland. One characteristic of a spit is how it continually curves as it extends outwards due to the force of the waves shifting material in that general direction. An example of a spit in the UK is Spurn Head in Easington. Bars, on the other hand, are similar to spits, 
in that they are extensions of the coast. However, they extend and reach the other side of the coast, closing off a bay or similar cavity of water into the landmass. An example of a section of coastline in the UK with major landforms of erosion and deposition is the Old Harry Rocks previously mentioned. The Old Harry Rocks were originally a headland, which was slightly eroded from the front, all because the rocks were made of a relatively resistant chalk material. Bays had formed on the side, since the coast was discordant, and the material on either side of the chalk was weak and became eroded. Coastal wave refraction from the headland aided in the formation of the bay, as the waves were diffracted and became constructive as they lost their energy. The headland was eroded to the point of majorly sticking out from the mainland, and inevitably, the weaknesses at its side were acted on by the erosion processes like hydraulic action and abrasion to cause the eventual formation of two arches. One of the arches collapsed and left a stack, a vertical pole of chalk material in this case, but was ultimately eroded at the base and was reduced to a stump, a small lump of material which used to form the base of a stack.